Sorry. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you guys and pull up the APSP 7 and 15 form. Uh, this form was built by the PHTA by individuals who are very code focused. Um, they may have uh, interests in the commercial world or ancillary pumps or other interests, but as it was built, it had good intentions. As it is used to communicate hydraulics, it is not very good. Um, I would highly encourage you to seek out um, a calculator that uh, helps you with your TDH. Most major manufacturers have one and they can help you get to a good estimate of what your TDH is. Uh, the best uh, advice I can give is to, uh, when you're calculating your TDH, err on the side of lower. Remember, the lower the TDH, the higher your GPM is on a pump curve, and you will have it piped and plumbed uh, appropriately in the event that your TDH is actually lower than anticipated. So <clears throat> uh, this first form, on the top of page one, uh, all this information is pretty cut and dry. Uh, there is no space to add notes on any of this so there, or on any of this form. So any written communication between the reviewer and uh, the individual putting this information in um, must be done outside of the form. So uh, that's one of the challenges. So step number one is to go to number one and put in the gallons of the pool. You can either get that off of uh, Pool Studio if you're using that or another CAD software, or you can use this calculated gallons. If you're putting the calculated gallons in, it is gonna take priority over what you've actually just entered in here. In this case, the 38,000 gallon pool, that automatically calculates your six hour turn rate. <laughs> you take gallons, divide by uh, 360, which is, uh, gets you your, gallon per minute minimum. Uh, 38,000 is a huge pool. What you're looking at with your spa at six, the pool and spa at six feet, with your, that dimension is probably around 11,000 if that. So at 11,000 gallons, you hit the minimum GPM. Um, the pool pumps uh, shouldn't pump less than 36 GPM for filtration efficiency and function. That's typically the minimum on filters to be effective is 36 gallons per minute. Um, so that's the bottom of the window that you need to hit for your pool pump volume of water. Moving on to three, this is the pipe size. Over here on the right side, it's going to tell you the minimum suction pipe diameter. This is completely worthless in working your pool hydraulics because it does not consider your pump selection. Uh, if you're using an inch and a half pumps, uh, pipes on your uh, suction, um, you're using a pump that only moves 36 gallons per minute. Um, most, if not all, uh, suction pipes for residential pools over uh, 8,000 gallons need to be at least two and a half inches in most cases because two and a half inches gets you at 89 GPM, which is kind of a spot where most two horsepower or bigger pumps are going to bottom out. Um, but moving forward, A is going to autofill for you. If you have done your calculations for your TDH uh, already with a secondary program, you have considered whether you're going to use a three inch suction or two, two and a half, or three and a two and a half, or three and a two, either of those pipe sizes, and you understand that you have more than one branch line or not. The way I envision a pump system is like a tree from the pump face. Out to the manifold is the trunk. From there, it branches into branch lines going to suck from the pool. From there, those branch lines um, will go to your T's, your uh, main drains, or will go to a uh, unblockable drain. So when I say branch pipes, it is once it has been manifolded off of the trunk line coming off of the front of the pump. If you need two, if you need two of those in your suction side, you'll put two here. If you only need one, leave it as one. Same on the return side. If you're returning on two inch pipes, but the pump is gonna move it faster than 84 GPM, then you'll either need bigger pipes or more of those two inchers. Um, if, if, that, if that is the case, 
and you have size two and a half and it's still not enough, then you can add an additional branch line and put a two here or 23, however your, my fat fingers want to put it in. So that's the, the hack on section three. Section four is pretty simple. Drop down, choose cartridge DE or SAM. It'll tell you your minimum amount based off of your uh, minimum GPM and the filter factor for it. Uh, if you have a backwash valve, indicate here, it'll let you know what the maximum, the minimum size is. Uh, then it gives you the helpful chart in converting pipe diameter and GPM to feet per second and its maximum GPMs here. Um, and number six, leave it blank for now. Number seven, leave seven B blank for now. And input the pump that you intend to use. I put a J hand pent waterway 50. Let me know what type it is and upload the pump curve for that pump when you're ready to, to settle on a pump. Um, if you're dead set on a 2.7 Teleflow, uh, Hayward 950, whatever, waterway 120, um, you can put that in there and plumb around it as needed. Uh, this next one is uh, heaters in your pool systems. Please check all that apply and continue on to uh, page three. Page three is a hot mess. If you're using it to calculate your TDH, you're in for um, an adventure because there's no way to change this pipe size or this pipe size from this particular setup. In order to change the pipe size, you have to change this auxiliary GPM. At 120, it gets to three. At 100, it'll calculate for two and a half. At 80, it'll calculate for two. My advice is to put the largest pipe size that you're going to use in this calculator to ballpark your pool. So in the event that you have uh, calculated for pipe that is bigger and your TDH is going to be lower and you're going to size it properly or within compliance, if not on the side of caution. But from here, you put in the suction side quantity of pipe from the equipment to the main drain. That's the distance of pipe, not the seven pipes in the trench, the distance from the pool main drain for the furthest drain back to the equipment. Same on the return side, from the pool equipment to the furthest return in your returns. Um, the next is the number of elbows. The suction side is the number of elbows in front of the pump intake. Return side, see there's 15 over here because it's all the elbows on the equipment pad from the uh, discharge side of the pump. Elbow over to the filter. From the filter, elbow over to the sanitizer. From the sanitizer, over to the heater. Heater to their manifold and any other devices on there. I may have switched over the sanitizer, but you get the drift. Any T's uh, used to split off for your returns or for the uh, manifold will be calculated here on the suction and turn side. And if you're opting to use um, four, uh, 245s instead of 90s, there's a much more efficient way to flow water. As you can see, 2045s accomplish the same turn as 10 elbows with three TDH, three feet ahead lower, less friction. So a gradual sweep instead of the hard elbows, a lot more efficient and will uh, help you build a better, more efficient, quieter pool. Um, Three-way valves in here, if you have them, for the suction return side, main drains, uh, put how many you got in the pool. Those will calculate at a loss of a foot and a half each. From there, it'll calculate the total of your suction side and return side, add in the filter loss. Uh, every filter has a curve. So at um, 100 GPM, you go up and over, you're gonna lose about 1.6 on this particular filter. Same with the heater. If you're running, doing the calculations for your spa and heater mode, you find that it's gonna need 100 GPM, you're just gonna take seven and a half feet ahead and put those as needed. Um, once you've gotten down, you have a TDH calculated for you here. If you're using alternative method of 
calculating TDH, whether it be a spreadsheet that you've created or found in a major manufacturers, you've done your due diligence, and it says that you're going to flow at 70, put four right there to get your TDH to here and you're good to go. If it says you're going to flow at 60, negative six here, and there you go. 60 put onto your pump curve, goes across and down to that 72 GPM on this particular curve. 72 GPM goes into 7D. And your form's complete. If you've got a spa, you don't need to fill out another one of these forms, but you need to consider it just as you would the pool. If you have a water feature pump that is separate from the filter that's fueling two three foot water shears, you're welcome to put the water shear pump 20 here, put the GPM at 40 and you're good to go. That'll help us have a quick conversation about where the suction outlets are and what you're, where you're taking the water from, and how you're effectively uh, satisfying VGBA 2017. But at that point, you'll have filled out um, all the information to submit your, your APSP 7 and 15 forms. Remember, if you've opted to have multiple branch lines for your suction or return, to fill these out accordingly. How does that sound? Sounds new, but, but horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I have the ability to rebuild this form. I've taken my programming classes. I'm more than happy to build this form in a fashion that is comprehensive and can, will help you calculate your TDH. The city of Austin says that needs to come from the PHTA and the PHTA um, and is, is working with on getting back to me about this issue. So we are in the works, we are in communication with both the folks that have written this code international level, at the, at the national level with the PHTA, the state level with the Texas Pool and Spa uh, Guild Group Coalition, that's it. And uh, locally so, with the city of Austin. Right, good. Yeah, just real quick, we, these form, this form is filled out at, you need it by pre-layout, right? Correct. I'm just thinking through, we, that means we got to get better at knowing exactly how our equipment manifold's going to look before. Right, we, we can't we can't plumb until we have this form filled out. Right, and a lot of, you know, like, like today, we, you know, in the past, we build the equipment manifold, you know, after, hell, is a lot, one of the last steps, right? We've got to think. We'll have to know that up front. Is all I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's not designed. You know, as opposed to just saying. Around. Yeah, we're saying, hey, equipment goes on the right side of the house today. Now we need to know, okay, how, what turns, how far, how's it going to look yeah. when it's set up, all that good stuff. Right. We need to know the exact path. Yeah. The equipment location. Fortunately for Elton, we already we already know, and uh, I think we should probably just uh, uh, standardize on Pentair equipment. And <clears throat> Tom's just so you're aware, we, we you know that's what we've pretty much used most of the time for us. Pentair and Teleflow VSF is what we, we we've standardized with, um, and we typically use the uh, um, Pentair heater as well. I just think okay. that's probably going to be easiest for us to, you know, kind of maneuver through since that's what we're most familiar with. Oh. Um, you're welcome to do that as you as you choose to. Please be open minded as far as the pools that don't have spas on them, uh, that may be in the eight to sixteen thousand gallon range. It's you're going to cover the pool floor and walls with fittings if you're using the. 2.7 horse pump. That 2.7 can turn a properly plumbed 9,000 gallon pool in about 90 minutes. 
No, uh, uh, understood. You know, we we want to we want to size this properly. Um, all all we're saying here is that uh, since that's the starting point for us, the equipment is our know-how at this point, and since the uh, hydraulic requirements are new to us, we just want to be able to kind of use that as a starting point. We don't we're not intending to add more cost to us more than necessary by any means, of course. Right. This conversation with you Fox, think, 